Okay, in the last video, I talked about what a canonical correlation is. In this video, I'm going to show you how to report a canonical correlation. Um, I really like uh, CCA as an analysis because there's it, it allows for a certain degree of, um, I'm not going to say intuition, but it is something like intuition uh, for, for informing further research. You'll see what I mean as we go through. Okay. So this was actually a part of my, my doctoral dissertation, sort of. Uh, it's a long story, but, but you can use something like CCA to ask this kind of question. And what I'm actually going to walk you through is uh, a question that I asked in some earlier research that I've done in a previous life. Um, is there a relationship between interpersonal values and ideal leadership values? Okay, here are interpersonal values. It's a set. It consists of different different uh, measures in here which are related to each other and here's this ideal leadership values variant it's also a set and so it's prime for canonical correlation because all of these measures are actually related to each other they, they correlate on a bivariate and uh, other level okay here's what some of the reporting looks like for a canonical correlation you can do First of all, you will have statistics for each of your canonical functions. Um, so it turns out that when I ran this analysis, only canonical function 1 was statistically significant. And this is p uh, less than 0.05. Here you see the p is 0 0.00. My f statistic was 2.7. Uh, but if you look at this, you can see the canonical correlation itself, r sub c squared, is 0.289. So apparently, the variables that I included in the analysis um, you know, only explained 29% of the relationship between set A and set B. And this is, eh, you know, it's not, it's not terribly high, but um, it's not super low either. So there was some kind of relationship in canonical function one. Remember, different canonical functions show you different aspects of the game being played. Team A, team B, canonical function one compares offense to defense. Canonical function 2 compares defense to offense, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, if you want to run your multivariate significance test, you can do things like Wilkes, Lam Wilkes Lambda, Hotelling's Trace, Pili's Trace, Roy's Largest Root, and whatever, and you can see that all of those multivariate significance tests were, in fact, um, significant at the P.05 level and beyond. Okay, now, when we do redundancy analysis, you can see that uh, uh, you get results for the effect of team A on team B and the effect on team uh, the effect of team B on team A and it looks like I got 0.048 and 0.082 for these different reversed relationships what all this means is that um, with a cumulative percentage of 0.048 for the the leadership values versus the interpersonal values uh, compared to the 0.082 for uh, the interpersonal values when you already start with the leadership values you show that basically the interpersonal values starting with the leadership values uh, are pretty low but but they depend more on the leadership traits than vice versa, which was actually a weird result. Typically, you'd think that uh, the personal stuff that comes with you influences the leadership type stuff. But uh, that has to do with my construct. It seems counterintuitive, but when you look deeper into it, um, it's different. But the bottom line is that redundancy analysis tells you who's doing, who's more responsible for influencing the results. Did this person beat? that other person in the election or did that other person simply blow the election given this one okay now this table actually shows my favorite part of CCA and here's where the intuition comes in when you have these results you get loadings and cross loadings those are the structural coefficients for each of the players on the team and this is kind of like saying uh, you know the the uh, quarterback and the uh, safety were more responsible for offense in this particular this particular relationship 
whereas the, uh, I don't know, these two defensive linemen here were more responsible for the defense. And these cross loadings, if you look at them, that it, it's kind of an art more than a science here, but you can see that these cross loadings are about 0.35 and higher in magnitude. And so it tells you that this group was, uh, with their respective loadings here, were the responsible parties for this particular relationship. And the intuition comes in because you have to ask yourself, what do these players all have in common? Here, these folks scored on arrogance, coldness, and aloofness in my measure. And this is a measure of interpersonal communion. Arrogance, coldness, and aloofness are all basically anti-communion. You don't want to hang out with other people. Uh, but the loadings are negative. So the less anti-hangout you were, the more likely you were to be a participant in this function. And I had to give that a name. The statistics will give you these numbers, but you're going to have to look at your predictor variables here and, and summarize it in the form of a package. Now, um, over here, since I was measuring leadership, I also did a study of, uh, not stu did a study, but I also got results that describe negative faith saving, positive humaneness, and negatively internally competitive leadership. And so I had to translate, translate that. What does anti-internally competitive versus pro-humane versus anti-face saving mean? Well, I thought of it as kind of a telling it like it is among friends thing. And so using your, your, your intuition for it, you basically say, uh, well, this is going to be in-group like leadership. And so when you have these heavier magnitude cross loadings and these positive or negative valence coefficients, you basically get the full story. These two teams were playing a game. This set of players versus this set of players highlighted were more responsible for how that game actually went. And canonical function one, which is this whole set of relationships, basically shows that interpersonal um, getting along with other people or getting together with other people um, is related to in-group like leadership. And so if I had, for example, some hypothesis that said there's no relationship between these two teams, I would actually have to reject that hypothesis because this shows that the relationships are indeed statistically significant. How's my time here? Yeah, okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop on this one. And um, in the next video, for anybody who's interested, I'll show you how to break these sets down to do a little bit more advanced partitioning of your canonical correlation results.